Now the end has come. People often ask me, were you ever afraid that you're going to die? And I tell them that I wasn't because in the midst of that battle, I experienced something that was greater than fear. Long before he received the Medal of Honor for his actions on the front lines of the Vietnam War, Gary Bykirk was just an aimless college kid in search of purpose. Man, I decided I was going to quit school and I was going to go into the Green Berets because of the training, their purpose, their mission. That's what I wanted. He got his wish in 1967, at 20 years old, when he became a Special Forces combat medic for the Green Berets. Attaining the Green Beret was a, uh, was a tremendous, tremendous sense of accomplishment for me. So I, I looked forward to, to going to Vietnam as a chance to fulfill the dream. That was until he discovered where he was headed, Camp Duc Sayang in the heart of the Vietnam jungle. Luckily, nearby was a remote Montagnard village where he befriended a 15-year-old soldier named Deo. I said to this young mountain yard boy, I said, I want you to teach me how to survive in the jungle because I'm afraid of snakes and I really don't want to run into any tigers. He said, I don't want to teach you how to survive. He said, I want to teach you how to live. And he became my mentor. He became my bodyguard. We developed a sense of camaraderie that taught me so much about life. Just before dawn on April 1, 1970, 10,000 North Vietnamese mounted an assault on the camp. We started taking artillery, rocket fire for hours, and then the uh, ground assault started. Most of the Americans were wounded. Most of the buildings above ground were leveled. While shielding an injured soldier from a mortar shell, Gary was hit. Metal fragments from the exploding rocket ripped into his spine. It was somebody next to me who picked me up. And I looked and it was Dale. And I said to him, how, how did you find me in the midst of this? He said, this is where I belong, with you. Gary could barely walk, but through a hail of enemy gunfire, he continued to rescue fallen comrades with the help of Deo. When he couldn't drag me, I dragged him. It was a love that overcame the fear of dying. We heard a rocket coming in. He rolled me over, the rocket exploded, and Deo was killed protecting me. He was the only reason that I survived that battle. But my greatest battle happened a few days later in the hospital. Partially paralyzed by shrapnel and wounded by three bullets, Gary fought for his life. It was my hand-to-hand -hand combat with death. One time I came to, there was a chaplain that was standing over me. And he said, would you like to pray? And I said, I don't know how to pray. I don't even know who to pray to. He said, that's OK. God knows how to listen. I said, God, if you're real, I need you. Something that came over me brought me a sense of love, a sense of you're not alone. I will be with you. And I said, I got to find out what's out there. Who is that that's out there? His curiosity stuck with him through 10 months of physical therapy. Once he learned to walk again, he visited the one person he thought might be able to help, his Christian cousin Jan and her husband, Buck. When he asked about God, they handed him a New Testament and said, read it. I read through John 15, and where he says that, as the Father has loved me, Gary, so have I loved you. You have not chosen me, Gary, but I have chosen you to bring forth much fruit. At that moment, I realized that Jesus was the God that I met in that hospital bed, and that he had a plan for me. I knelt down and I accepted Christ as my savior. While he felt some joy, a war was waging in his soul. There are many demons and, and things that you fight during the war, and those things become voices that you hear in your head over and over and over again, and they haunt you. So he took his fight to a cave in New Hampshire, where he fought for his very soul. I fought a battle in my own heart and my own mind. I said, God, I wouldn't be alive if it weren't for you and your grace. I'm giving you my life totally. Whatever you want for my life, that's all I want. Two weeks after that prayer, Gary received the Medal of Honor. For Gary, it's a symbol of love. It's not about me. It's not about anything that I've done. It's about the millions of other men and women who serve. It's about dying to yourself, caring for others. It's about God and what God has done. Without his grace, I wouldn't have survived Vietnam. And without his forgiveness and his love, I never would have come out of that cave. Gary married, earned degrees in both psychology and sociology, worked as a counselor, and now serves as a chaplain. 
He shares his story with anyone searching for purpose. Significance comes when you find out that God has a plan for your life. And you say, God, I will follow your plan. And then you let God use you. You let God use you to love others, to make a difference in their lives. To me, that's significance.